Hello everyone, my name is Biggins and now I'm doing Doom again. Sorry it's been a wee while since the last episode of whatever this is. The last one got some traction, so there's been a decision from the higher ups that we need a regular series, which has caused some growing pains. A couple of the projects my editor suggested didn't turn out right. Nah, I'm not playing it anymore. Maybe it was alright on the Wii, but I'm quitting right now. If my editor doesn't like it, then maybe he can take a break from all the badger baiting and the white power rallies and come play the fucking game himself. So, brief leave of absence later, everybody's medicated, nobody's fired, and I'm back to talk about the Doom campaign. So let's crack on. Just do a wee bit of customising first. Oh yeah, baby, feel the view. So the last Doom game was a critical and commercial success, but it's actually come to divide opinion amongst Doom fans as the years have gone on on whether or not it's a good Doom game. I mean, it's fair to say that Doom 3 adopted some of the more contemporary FPS tropes and motifs and it suffered a bit of an identity crisis as a result. I mean, I personally quite enjoyed the atmosphere that it created, but folk thought that it was out of place for the franchise that essentially defined the running and gunning power fantasy that FPSs used to be back in the day, and you can't really say that they're wrong. I mean, the intro sequence, which essentially was the entire first level, was pretty excessive. Let me just walk you through the first level highlight reel of Doom's first 15 minutes of play and see how long it takes us to actually shoot a fucking zombie. Welcome to Mars. First time? Head directly to Marine Command. Follow the thing. I had a larger, more competent staff and bigger budget. Even these few accidents could have been avoided. Mm. Took your sweet time, Marine. Fuck you, buddy. Now. Oh, it's... Mars Sack radio check. Scientist, right? I'm not sure you want to find him. What? You... I know. I built his case. I'm getting abnormal readings here. What are you talking about? Ah, <sighs> okay. So, you know, we enjoyed it, like a wee bit of atmosphere, but, you know, takes a while. Let's see how long it takes New Doom. They are rage, brutal, without mercy. But you, you will be worse. Rip and tear until it is done. So you leap out your hell tomb in the buff and go to town in some shambling spastics. Completely starkers, armed only with a pistol and your own rage. It's a six to midnight moment if you're an anemic little shit like me, where you get to go Charlie Bronson on some fucker within seconds of booting up the game. There's no need for this residence cascade bullshit here that Doom 3 tried to knock off. Folk didn't like it because it wasn't Doom, and the good news is that New Doom seems to agree with you. New Doom doesn't fuck about. You wake up and shit's already hit the fan, and you know you're the only sick freak capable of stopping it. Demons on Mars, man. Fuck that. Let's go to work. The work we do, boys. My god. It is breathtaking. Playing Doom is like taking a day job as the Grim Reaper after the Grim Reapers just watched John Wick. You fly around the map like the spectre of death, ascending the map's verticality, blasting beautifully animated monstrosities, smashing the weak ones with your powerful hands. Dear oh dear. I think we all thought the glory kills would get old. Games like Rise and the New Castlevania have all taught us to be suspicious of the melee execution. Repetitive and slow kill animations that are watched over and over and over again, normally with no mechanical influence or any real skill to input. ID have incorporated their glory kills into the combat, in my opinion, seamlessly. The demons flash blue when they're staggered, and killing them with a melee attack grants health, which is actually, in a lot of ways, quite difficult to come by beyond the pickups. The animations are satisfying, varied, but most importantly, they're quick, so they rarely feel like they're actually interrupting the flow of your wrath. 
I read somewhere that the design philosophy of Doom was based around the concept of a 30 second loop of gameplay. 30 seconds of killing, leaping, executing, looting. That made up the core of the game's appeal. This 30 second loop needed to be satisfying and varied enough to keep players interested in repeating this process over and over again throughout the completion of the game. I honestly think there's something honest and quite amazing about recognising that purity of essence in a game's design and prioritising the realisation of that concept over adding any superfluous features extraneous to Doom's pitch, with that pitch being, kill a lot of shit and make it feel good. Real talk here boys, I'm not going to talk to you about the weaponry. The reason for that being the best possible one, which is that discovering the alt-fired modes and the upgrades and all of the capabilities that each of Doom's weapons has is one of the best joys to be found in the game, and I do not want to spoil it for you. All I'm going to do is show you the moment that I realised the Gauss Rifle in Siege mode is literally tits. FULLY ERECT ME! I'm going to surprise you all here and say that something else that feels equally as satisfying to the combat is the exploration side of things for Doom. They've made full use of the fact that Doom used to have secrets squirreled away in the nooks and crannies of its games, and New Doom has such sprawling and complex interwoven maps that are normally pretty open-ended that there's so much opportunity to hide all sorts of shit all over the place. If traipsing around a level looking for all the possible collectibles and secrets doesn't really sound like your bag, then I understand, because it usually isn't mine. However, Doom incorporates this side of the game into the design so adeptly that I honestly recommend that you give it a try at least. It circumvents a lot of the problems that plague the secret and exploration segments of other games with some smart design elements. The 3D map also displays how many secrets there are still to find. You can upgrade your suit to highlight collectibles on the map and the controller will vibrate the closer you are to a secret. You always know where you stand and you're never going to be looking around for a secret that isn't there or one that you can't access yet. Actually finding the goodies becomes incredibly satisfying due to Doom's pacing and also the sensible incorporation of the game's verticality. Mantling and vaulting is quick and easy and the 3D map is instrumental to finding all the secrets. But one of the things that makes it so so good and avoids so much of the problems that are associated with secrets in other games is Doom's conveyance. Look at this, right? Right there. That. That's good conveyance. So what I'm actually on about is Doom's use of colour cues. You'll probably already have noticed that the environments tend to be deep, warm, saturated reds and yellows, earthy colours, you know, something where essentially any kind of colour contrast is really going to stand out. Doom makes use of green as a means of leading the player. There's normally green lighting of some kind on a usable ledge or an accessible area, and that can normally help lead the player without ever explicitly telling them where they need to go. So simply by spotting that green light at the top of that cliff face, I realised that that was a place that I could actually access, incentivising me to try to get there and eventually leading me to the secret. The game doesn't stop the flow of the game to tell you these things or to watch out for these cues, you just start to internalise them as you play, and that my friends is shit hot conveyance. Honestly, it's been a real pleasure playing this game, and I really could talk about it all night. However, I don't think that I could do any of the more meaty topics justice within this 10 minute video. The characterization of the Doom Marine needs its own. So just take this for the aggressive recommendation that it is. It's a wonderful game that stands defiant against its contemporaries. It's an elegant, well executed, and surprising example of why simple doesn't necessarily mean stupid. I tip my fucking hat to you, ID. And here's the thing, you know... I defended the game when a lot of people didn't and a lot of people said that it's going to be shit and I said wait until the single player campaign comes out and now it has come out and it's been very critically well received so I mean if I was a wanker I would play some kind of obnoxious video at the end of this just you know as this is the point of thumbing my nose at the pricks that ratted on me on the internet but fortunately I've got a bit more class than